again, when you do this, and I did find this to be a little bit of a problem on a couple two. Here's your zero. Here's your negative 196, right there. Here's your zero. It's right in between here. When Z square is zero, what is the area to the left? 50. Point five zero zero zero. It's not zero or one. It's point five zero zero. Then you look up this area, and then you're going to subtract your area. And when you look up this one, it's zero two five zero. Subtract them. Line up your decimal points. You can put the zero here. You don't have to. Um, there is just a Sorry. Just choose. No. If if I just ask for area, you could leave it like this. Let's take a look at the problem on the back for a second. Oh, can we just look at number six for a minute too? Number six, I know a couple were off on number six. Okay, now, what? Just six. Here is your negative one. Here is your negative 7.4. There, to the right of this. Doesn't this have to be more than 50%? It has to be more than 50%. When you look up that negative, you're going to get less than 50%. Use your curve as a guide. So if it's less, then subtract it from 1. Or another way to do it is look up the positive 0.74. And then you don't have to subtract it from 1. Okay, I know that was a couple there. And the last one, I know this one was a problem. This 150 bills. And I know some of you put 115 times that. And I know where you got your 115 from here. When you did this one, here is your, that's probably what happened, right? You took the 115 off of there, not the 150 off of the end. Okay, so if some of you gave me 115 times that decimal, times 1.1056, you should have had 150 bills, not 115. This guy right here, the probability that x is greater than 115, the probability, and most of you got this, was um, 0.1056. Now, if I want to know if the next 150 bills come in, and it follows this pattern, probability is a, a way we predict what you expect. Like the shoppers walking into the store. Remember we did that one with the shoppers coming in? Between a certain amount of minutes, less than some minutes. We wanted to know how many people we thought would be in our store. If, a hundred, if 200 people walk in, 100 people walk in. So the most 150 bills, a little bit more than 10%, almost 11% of them should follow this pattern. So we take this and we just multiply by that probability. And then part of it was, how do you have 0.84 of a bill? You can't. Your bills are discrete. You count them discreetly. One, two, three, four, five. So, so round, up round up to 16. Just use your basic rules of rounding. If it's less than 0.5, drop it down. But you can't have 0.84 of a bill. So that was one problem. And the other problem was using 115. That was the probability statement, not the amount of bills. Okay. Any other questions on the quiz? Well, tomorrow's test is going to look like this. It's going to have How more. Many, many questions? There's, there's actually seven, but some of them have two parts or three parts. So there's ten parts altogether. Literally, it's like the same material. Literally, it's the same. There's probably more of this last part. There's probably only three problems finding probability itself, just the Z, because that's just basic, just to help you get started. And then the, the major part of your test will be these word problems. Will look like your uh, review then. All right. The first part and the first part of your test will be just like the first part of your quiz. It will look like finding your areas to the left, to the right, and I will ask you to make a probability statement. The Z is less than 0.33. I need a sketch. I need a probability statement for each of them. 
Yeah, you're not gonna fall into this guy's trap here. Yeah, that's and this one I did put in the right order. Yeah, that's the negative one. Yes, you read the number line left to right. Now the in between, can everybody find the areas in between? Anybody struggle with the in between? Make sure you do not subtract your D score. You find your area and you subtract your, your area. And your area must always be positive. I noticed a couple of years ago to subtract backwards, but you kept your area positive. That was fine. That was fine. Okay. I said start like at 23. Yeah. Okay. So this is a typical D score problem. We find your area, subtract your area. Well, that's, not the that's not the 23? Yeah, that's not at all. That's what I have. Oh. What I have is, yeah, I had that. That's 23. Is greater than negative 27? No, that's 23. 23? That's okay. As long as you did a couple. Oh. Okay. <laughs> Number 27? Oh, it is number 27. Is number 27 okay? Mm -hmm. Find the mean? Shh. Guys, we just have a short amount of time. Probably 10 minutes to do this. Um, can everybody find the mean and the standard deviation? Put it on the curve and label it? Yeah. Everybody go with the shading? Okay. We need to shade it. Yes, we need to shade. Um, the shading follows your your inequality sign. No, I'm saying, like, I know which way it goes, it's just seeing all the different scores. Oh, all the, yeah. 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 Then you can do different ones. Yeah, you can do different ones. I noticed some of you, like, got creative, wrote little dots, or did you actually, your lines the opposite way, yeah. and that, that helps. Or just do two on one and just do one on the other. Um, when it says point four four, it's not like zero, 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 zero. No, the zero, zero at the end? You can't. That's fine. I just you can you you can or because you don't really need the zero zero you can leave a point. It'd be like writing six zero or four. Yeah. Zero. Uh, one thing on your test, guys, your quiz. Four digits. When you got this, this is your scientific notation number. Your calculator automatically does this when it has too many zeros. Your decimal is here, and it says go to the left, go to the negative, four positions. So a lot, most of you were able to get this, but some of you, I guess, didn't know what the e to the negative 4 was. Or you could just subtract it by hand. Um, that was what I remembered to say. Sorry. Why is that pretty Well, I think it only goes up to, like, it'll do three zeros, and then anything else it puts into scientific notation. I think you change it in the settings. No, you can't, because it's still in your regular scientific notation setting. It's in a normal setting, but it automatically flips it. I think technically, if you have to physically count the zeros, you're more apt to make a mistake. Mm -hmm. So if it tells you move it eight to the right, left four, then you're more accurate. You know, rather than sitting trying in your calculator to count your zeros. Okay, were you guys all okay with these? Yeah. I tried to do those. All right. Here's a good problem. Let's walk through this problem. As a matter of fact, oh, I should have. Okay, let's walk through this problem. This is typical, and in, in 10 minutes we'll be fine. Can't, we can get through this. So we can do it. We can do it. Okay, this is what you're going to see tomorrow on your test. Um, it will look exactly like one of these. In a study of migrating sandhill cranes, the distance traveled is normally distributed. It has a mean, and it has a standard deviation. Please do this one with me. Make sure you write this one down. Find the probability that the distance traveled in one day by a randomly selected crane from the study is less than 200 between 250 and 350 greater than 500. Do all individual probability. Yeah, all individual. Probability that S is less than 200. Probability that it's greater than one second. That it is between these two numbers. Probability that it is greater than 500. Notice there's not one part where we overlap it either. Like you can't use one to the next. You have to just find them each time. Well, if you get a question like this on a test, yes. do we have to make three different tests? No, you only really have to make one. But then, yeah. but then you want to go on. Right, right. But what I, did, what I did also is what they did here. I didn't overlap them. 
So when you say less than 200, it separates. Okay, but, but less than watch me. Then it goes between 250 and 350. It doesn't use this. It uses from here to 350. Then it uses from here on out. I did an overlapping. Yeah, so mine looks like... It won't overlap. Alright. It'll it, be three it steps. crazy, you won't and, give me And just do two sketches if you need to. Do sketch here and click sketch here. Uh, okay, but wait. Instead of, like the first time around, do your full sketch. The second time around, only do the, the pieces that you need. 267. Okay, listen to me. <laughs> All you need for the second one is to just do this, right there. You don't need to do the entire thing, because then you're going to go like this. Well, like on the quiz, I did three different sets that took like a half hour. Okay, no, uh, what I'm saying to mine is, don't do the nice details. The second one, I don't need the whole detail. You are just label the piece of meat. The third one, all I really need is this piece out here. Is what's, what's near the 500, 439 and 525. All I need is that piece out there. Don't do it as details. If, if the sketch bothers you to do it all together. Okay, so we can walk through the two square formula that you all have to know. X minus the mean over the standard deviation. And an easy way to tell is if it's to the left of the zero, it's negative. So it's the smaller minus the larger, right? Over the standard deviation, find your z-score. How many decimal places on a z-score? Two. Two. How many of you gave me one decimal place on a z-score? No? Nobody in this class? How many of you rounded incorrectly on your z-score? The one that said negative 0.167? Did you have 0.166? Mm. Rounded incorrectly, then it's off. Mm. Make sure I get two decimals on the z-score. If you use the step, I want the whole step written out. I want negative 999, 200, your mean, your standard deviation. I used to like that way. I realized that I'm not messing with that. Uh, yeah. The one that works the best for it is the in between. You're right. Now, guys, seriously, I'm doing this for you, not for me. Aaron, between 250 and 350, you can find your z scores. Look up your z scores, subtract them. Greater than 500. Look at how small that area is under that curve. Shouldn't that be a really tiny number? When you look that up, look how large that number is 0.9966. It only can be a little tiny thing. Doesn't that mean you have to subtract it from one? Right? That should tell you right there. Okay. So, they're going to look like this, and they're going to look like the z-score problem. Any questions? Alright. So, my goal, guys, is I'm hoping...